Good morning, everyone. It's Laura. I was working on some resin ornaments this morning, and it occurred to me that I should have videoed what I was doing so I could teach you guys because I know I promised that I would try to do a tutorial on the ornaments where we're putting stuff inside, like these. So, what I thought I would do is show you each step. I've got various stages here, and I can show you the whole process at once, including putting in putting the little eye hook in. So, um, these are just a few of the things that um, I'm using. So, I thought I'd put them out for reference. Um, the other night we talked about printing your acetate paper. It's printable acetate, and you can find it on Amazon. I bought some at Hobby Lobby. Some people are saying that it's not at Hobby Lobby anymore. I haven't checked because I bought 50 sheets on Amazon last year. You can search printable plastic. Um, these sheets are really good for printing words or um, I also printed this. As long as it's going to have a white background, you're going to be able to see it really well. The printable acetate is not good for photographs unless you're going to have a white background. What I do with those is I would print that on printable vinyl and stick it to a piece of regular acetate paper. So um, that's what works great for me. So anyway, I did the little ovals and they, you know, I don't know if I'm dumb or what, but in my head, 1.75 means one and three quarters. But when I put in 1.75 in design space, and it's not, it's not working. So I cut these ovals too big. So it's okay, it's not a big deal. I just did it because I was lazy. But all I'm gonna do, and all I did with some of the ones that I cut out this morning, is just, um, just cut loosely around your words. It doesn't matter how it looks because when you put it in the epoxy, it's gonna hide it, it's gonna hide your acetate. So um, I just cut loosely around. Now I will say after I printed these, I sprayed the printed side with clear spray paint. And I prefer Rust-Oleum hands down over Krylon because Krylon is crap. It runs, it doesn't cover well, it's junk. So I will use the clear because it doesn't matter as much if it runs. Um, and I did get that because it was 25% more free, but I prefer Rust-Oleum. So if you can buy Rust-Oleum, just leave the Krylon sitting on the shelf because it's crap, especially colors. You're going to be putting layers after layers when you paint your tumblers. So there's my little plug for Rust-Oleum today. And I'm not making any money off of it. Imagine that. Um, so anyway, I've cut out a couple of things here and I've mixed my epoxy and I use the amazing clear cast and um, that's the same thing that a lot of us use for the tumblers. Some people have mentioned using FX epoxy in these resin ornaments didn't work well because it was cloudy. I haven't tried it. I do have the FX, but it's not even open. I haven't tried it yet, so I need to get with um, Susanna for some pointers before I even attempt that. So I mix the epoxy according to the directions, and um, I've let this sit for a while because what you don't want to do is put your words in as soon as you pour it. It's just too um, fluid. It, it moves. It causes your decals to float up to the top. I've done one so that I can show you what happens, and um, we'll put some in that, now that the epoxy is set up. Now, the way you can tell when it's time to do this is you're going to take your popsicle stick, and you'll see that it has started to set up. This might be still a little too fluid, but you're going to have a string that comes up with your popsicle stick. That's when it's ready, okay? So, 
with that said, we're going to, actually I don't know why I put that back. Um, I usually keep a little bathroom cup handy to put my stick in when I'm not using it so it doesn't get everywhere. Okay, when you first pour your epoxy in, you're gonna fill it about a third of the way. And that's gonna allow for your decal to go in and maybe an embellishment. And then once that sets up, we're gonna come back behind it with some color. So we wanna make sure we have plenty of room for our color and um, put enough clear in so that you're gonna get the effect that you want that the embellishment is kind of floating. I hope you can see it. I can't see my camera. So I'm just hoping that I'm holding this in the right place. So you want it to appear like it's floating. So once I put this in here, I use the straw to just gently blow across the surface of it to pop any air bubbles. And even though this has been sitting for 30, 45 minutes, it's still popping the bubbles. And if the light is shining on it, you can really see, and it's amazing how many little microscopic bubbles are there. But even though you can't really see them looking right at it, it's going to maybe make your um, uh, clear epoxy a little hazy. And you don't want that, so you want it to look as nice as possible. So I'm just going to pop these real quick. You don't want to blow like you're blowing bubbles. You just want to just kind of gently blow through there. You can also use a, um, a mini butane torch, a, um, a grill lighter, or you can use um, your embossing tool. So any of those methods will pop the bubbles, but I prefer the straw because I don't have to deal with much. And you can really see those things popping. So this is one that I put in right after um, I put the epoxy in. It had only been sitting for about 30 minutes and it was just too runny. It was too fluid. The decal floated to the top. I'm not sure if you can see, but it is floating. So when I push it in, you can see how much it has floated up. So try to be patient. Maybe um, pour it and paint a tumbler or something to keep you occupied. If you're impatient like me, um, I have to find something to keep me busy. Otherwise, I'm wanting to put the decals in too early like I did this one. So just push it down and make sure that it's down in there good. Now, if you think there might be some bubbles underneath, you can move this around, kind of push out with your popsicle stick. You don't have to fool with it this long. I'm just showing you a couple different things. And then try to make sure your words are good and straight and centered. The G looks like it's going up the curve a little bit, so I'm just gonna move it over a tad. Whoops, a little too much. All right, so what we'll do is go ahead and put another one in. This is the um, Cancer Awareness one. I needed to make a bunch of these, so I thought I would just use this to show you. And just push it in really easy. And when you push it, you're going to see some bubbles come up. That's all right. We're going to get them out. Okay, just make sure that all the air is out. And these are a little bit time consuming, but they are so cute. I wouldn't make one or two of these. Um, it just wouldn't be worth the time to pull everything out. It's better if you can print everything that you need and make them all at once. And in case anybody missed it, um, I got the moles on e, um, Etsy from DC Findings. Um, she's a real nice lady. So she has um, pink and she has clear, I think. I got this mat from her too. I really like that because I like the little mats that I get from Walmart. 
um, those plastic ones, but they do get funky after a while. And I'm sure if I did alcohol ink on this, it's going to be funky, so I won't do that, but it just looks funky. So, and if the epoxy gets on this, once it dries, you can just pop it right off. All right. So I do have some air bubbles in there from that. I'm going to go ahead and do Emily. So we're going to put it in. Of course, it's going to look backwards, but from when it gets done, it's going to be um, correct because you're going to be looking at the other side and at the back. Okay, so we're just pushing it down and in there. Make sure that it's all the way in. And I'm going to try and go slow, but I don't want the video to drag out too fast, but I want to make sure that you're seeing what I'm doing. So feel free to fast forward if I'm too wordy, because you know I love to talk. All right, so I'm going to let that sit there for a second. Um, the more you mess with it, the more bubbles are going to be in there that you have to contend with. So... I'll just leave it alone. Now, as you can see, this one has started to float again. It's kind of a pain when you put it in too early. If it's floating a little bit, that's okay because it'll have a little bit of clear, a little bit more clear between the outside of the ornament and your actual decal. So, here we go. This one doesn't appear to be floating as much. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is put an embellishment in there. And I did do one of the little uh, LED lights. And I'll show you those when we get to the next step. I already had one batch that I did this morning. But I'm going to show you how to put the color on the second layer. So I'll show you about that LED light again. We'll make that together because I haven't finished one yet. I'm doing it today. So so what you're going to do is you're going to have the flat side. Anything that you want to see when you hold the ornament, you want that down. Otherwise, it's going to be backwards when you're looking at it. And when you put your color and your dome coat on the back, it's going to be not visible. So... All right, go popsicle stick. And then just take this popsicle stick and just gently push it in. And sometimes when you put your embellishments in, a big air bubble will come up. But that's all right, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of them. All right. Another one. I don't really want this tilted that much. Here we go. OCD, right? And then you can use your embellishment to kind of push it, the decal down. When they float, it's kind of irritating. But you don't want to wait too long because it gets really gummy and the air bubbles are terrible. And they're harder to get out as that epoxy sets up. Okay. So now we're going to do another elephant for Emily. I think this one might be too big. So that one's so cute. But I think it's just too big for this ornament. It probably isn't, but I'll have to hold it up and see how it looks through here before I commit to putting that in there. I can always put in something else. So we're going to use this little guy. So we're going to put him face down. And then push him in. Try to get him centered so he looks good in there. And then check as you go and make sure that your words are staying straight. Of course, you can fix them on the very last time you mess with it. 
and this one looks like it's all right so as you can see it takes a little fiddling with them um but i, th I think it's worth it because they really are cute All right, let's see if the elephant's floating. Not really. He's floating a little, but not too much. I'm just wanting to make sure Emily is straight because I'm going to move these over in a moment to work on the next step. All right, so now you're just going to want to check and make sure there's no um, lint floating in there or crazy cat hair or dog hair and you're going to have some toothpicks handy I use the round ones you can use whatever you like the flat one the ones that have a flat end might be nice because it might be actually easier to capture an air bubble so in here I can see a few little bubbles so what I'll try to do is get under it and bring it up out of the epoxy I mean if you want you can put it on the back nobody will be able to see it but I usually wipe it off with paper onto a paper towel and you can try the straw and again sometimes when you blow on it it'll get a little foggy but it'll clear right on back up All right, pause it for a moment to, because I don't think you wanted to sit there and watch me get air bubbles out. And I'm just pushing them back down to make sure. And I don't really want to send them over to the counter while they're still floating. So I may pause this a couple of times so the video is not a marathon. But I don't want to pause it so long that it ends the video because I have no idea how to get it back to make it keep going. So I'm going to pause it again for just a few moments. Okay, so I think these are pretty much staying down now. And I'm only pausing it a few moments, so just to let you know the time. Maybe a minute is what I paused it. But if it's too fluid they're gonna float so you might have to babysit and obviously I'm still learning so I don't really know how long is the perfect amount of time to let it sit before I start messing with it but again this morning by the time I got my camera set up with the new tripod I bought yesterday which is a pain and a piece of crap I got it at Michael's um, by the time I got it set up the epoxy had kind of gotten away from me I didn't want to start a video with our project that was kind of going to have challenges. Of course, I started to post it because I could show you how to overcome the challenges, but if you let your epoxy get away from you, you can heat it up with the embossing tool and it'll give you a couple of seconds to work with it. But I will tell you, and I speak from experience because I wrecked tumblers. Be careful with that embossing tool in this epoxy. It changes the composition of it and it makes it brittle as crap. It, they, the stuff will just snap in two. So be careful not to heat it up too much or you're going to wreck something. I know because I've done it. I've made almost all the mistakes. That's how I learn. I think um, I read something that Joe Bot posted last night commenting on Doug's project for his rotisserie with his nephew Aiden and he said if you're not learning if you're not making mistakes you're not learning so I like that that's true you learn from your mistakes so see we can learn stuff in this group that doesn't have anything to do with crafting things that have to do with life that's why I like it here all right I'm gonna take a chance on these and move them out of the way pray that they don't float because I really don't want to waste my embellishments I don't really care about the acetate or the epoxy but 
I don't want to buy new embellishments. All right, and here we have some that I did this morning. Make sure they're in frame so you can see what I'm going to do. Now, so that you don't have to sit here and watch me mix the epoxy, I'm going to um, show you what I do in case you've never mixed epoxy before. I'm going to pause it so the video is not 100 hours long. Come back, pause it, and as I do each step. So, um, what I normally do is I use these little medicine cups that I got from Amazon, and I'm going to move this so that I don't accidentally put my arm in it. I usually mark where I want the fill line to be, and if I'm doing um, just a little bit, I'll mix it in this cup. If I'm doing more, then I'll mix it in these little cups or these little silicone cups that I got from Amazon. But supposedly, if you let the epoxy dry in there, you can just pop it out. You know, well, that didn't work so great. These things look like crap. So what I normally try to do is spray alcohol in there and wipe it out with a paper towel. but. I'd rather just use something I can throw away because that's just wasting things. So for the three that I did that we just worked on, I did, what did I do? I think I did two drams of each part of epoxy. So it was only this much and that filled up three of those wells. This morning I did an ounce of each. I'm just going to do eight drams. So I just mark it because you can't see. It has lines on it, but you can't see them. So I just fill. And again, this is boring, but I want to make sure everybody knows. Fast forward through this part if you already know how to mix epoxy. But I hate that people have to go, you know, three or four videos learning how to do something. So I try to Put it all here so everybody can um, see how to do it. The part I like about mixing the second layer is you don't have to be super careful about air bubbles. You don't want like giant air bubbles, but unlike the clear part, this is going to have glitter or color. So it's um not that critical if you have air bubbles so you can mix it like a wild person if you want to so I'm just pouring it in my little Dixie cup and make sure you get I use the same cup some people are super particular about their epoxy and I get it because if you don't mix this stuff just right it's going to be sticky or it's not going to set up at all so I always put the um, um, resin part in first. That's the thick, gooey, gross one. I always put that in first. And I use the same cup to put the second part in. All right. Okay. Now, there is still some in here. I do try to get any obvious large amounts out, but I don't go crazy. I'm not suggesting you do this. You can use two medicine cups if you want to. And this is just how I do it. All right, so I'm gonna set that to the side and I'm gonna find my line. And we're gonna put the hardener in. I'm using the same cup. Hardener goes in much quicker. And I usually let it go over a little bit. It's okay, I think, to put a little extra hardener. Been my experience that it is fine to put a little extra hardener. Don't make it super crazy out of ratio. You know, just a little teeny bit. Working on that. Here we go. 
And then I don't necessarily scrape all of this out if I feel like I might have put a little bit too much hardener in, which I actually do. I feel like I might have on this. So I won't sit here and get every little drop like it's a precious commodity, which of course it is, but all right. Yeah. Throw that in the trash. So then you just mix it. You're gonna want to stir it really well until there are no streaks in it. Um, you can see how cloudy and streaky it looks. You don't want it to do that. So I'm gonna pause it while I stir it up. Okay, so I have it all stirred up, and as you can see, there's air bubbles in it, and I'm not going to freak out because it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to pour some of this in here because I want to, most of these are going to be pink, but I have two that aren't pink, so I'm just going to pour some in here to use for those two, and I'm just going to put it to the side. All right, now I have um, a couple of different things that I use to color um, this second layer. So you have your hearts that have the resin, which is the step that we just did. These have been sitting for a while. They're a little bit hard, but they're still tacky to the touch. If you wanted to, you could, um, I think it's this one that's going to be super messed up. So I'll show you. I'm going to be throwing it away anyway. Let me get something real quick. Hold on. I want to show you. Okay, I'm back. So let's say you had one that you wanted to put some little cutesy stuff on. You can get these little um, shapes and Michaels. And okay, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, but Joanne has a 60% off coupon today. Today is November 11th. Um, so you could use your 60% off coupon to get these for hardly nothing. And then someone sent me these gorgeous little things here. So. I don't think there's anything in there I want to use, though. So you just turn your dial to what you want to use. And I think I want the pink hearts, just to show you. So I normally tap, I just normally pour a couple out. And you can put them on your mat. Hopefully you can see those. And let's see. I think you can. All right. So then, if you're going to find your toothpick, what you can do is just get a little teeny bit of epoxy on the very tip of your toothpick that can pick these up. And if it's tacky enough, they'll stay. So if you wanted to just put some little random hearts in there, You do that. And let's see, I don't have enough epoxy on there. I'll just put a tiny little dab of epoxy just to pick those up. Okay, so you could just put some little hearts or some little whatevers there. If you wanted to, you could also sprinkle a little a little bit of glitter on there and um, I, I don't normally do that I did do it when I was testing it but it's really no need so um, let me think what else I'll probably think of something else later but I'm going to show you how to color for the second layer oh there's another heart let me drop him in there I put those hearts on backwards, I think. 
silver side is down. I'm not going to worry about it because I know those are going to get trashed. That one is going to get trashed. Okay, so there's the epoxy we're going to be working with. I have um, a mixed, I don't want to get glitter all over my mat. I mixed a um, white or clear, translucent, holographic, whatever I could find. Chunky mixed. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's just this and that, whatever I had that was um, white or clear. Some of it has a pink tint to it. I put some little baby silver stars in there. Um, I put shaved ice in there. That has a pink tint to it. Um, I got this at Hobby Lobby. That's the only place I've seen it. It's not cheap. I think it's like mm, $4.99 maybe. But anyway, I keep a little bottle of this on hand and um, you could pour it in and then get um, other glitters like for the pink I could put more of these in more of this in to make it really pink that's what I did for the ones I did the other night and I kept adding I started with this and I just kept adding until I got it as dark as I want you can really see the darker it is you can really see the um, clear white chunky mix a whole lot better than you can with this one but today because I'm always liking to try new things um, I did this pink chunky mix so I'm going to use some of it I'm just going to pour a little bit more of this white in and close that so I don't spill it because that is a precious commodity and I'm going to put, of course, the sealed thing is still on it. I'll take the cap off, pour some in. And when you put this glitter in, it's going to thicken up your epoxy, so you might have to make some more. It's not that big of a deal. And I did like the darker pink, so I am going to put a little bit more of the this is called pink, and it's from AC Moore, which I know y'all don't have AC Moore's, but bubblegum would work from Michael's. I'm just going to put a little more of that in there because I want it to be a little darker pink. All right? You just stir it up. And like I said, you don't have to be slow. You can just mix it like a cake if you want. doesn't matter. Can't really see the air bubbles in this step. Get your sides so you don't have a... I'm going to double cup because it feels so squishy. All right. Just mix it up until you love the color. You can add a little more glitter. It's better to start with a little and add more 